The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully hear our prayers. Be gracious to us in our weakness, and give us strength to keep your commandments in all we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. first lesson for this evening is taken from the Old Testament book of Hosea, reading at the end of chapter 5 into chapter 6. I will go. I will return to my place until they are judged guilty, and they seek my face in their distress. They will seek me eagerly. Come, let us return to the Lord. He himself has torn us, but he will heal us. He is wounding us, but he will bandage us. He will restore us to life after two days. On the third day, he will raise us, so, raise us so that we may live before him. We will know. We will pursue knowledge of the Lord. His coming forth is as sure as the coming of dawn. He comes to us like the rain, like the spring rain that waters the earth. What will I do to you, Ephraim? What will I do to you, Judah? Your loyalty is like a mist in the morning like early morning dew that goes away. That is why I have cut them into pieces by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth. The judgments against you are spreading out like light. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. So far the Old Testament reading. We'll now join in singing the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 119, found in page 111.
second lesson is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 4. Hoping beyond what he that is Abraham could expect, he believed that he would become the father of many nations just as he was told. This is how many your descendants will be. He did not weaken in faith even though he considered his own body as good as dead because he was about 100 years old. And even though he considered Sarah's womb to be dead, he did not waver in unbelief with respect to God's promise, but he grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Now the statement it was credited to him was not written for him alone, but also for us to whom it would be credited namely to us who believe in the one who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead. He was handed over to death because of our trespasses and was raised to life because of our justification. So far the epistle lesson. for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is found in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. He said to him, follow me. Matthew got up and followed him. As Jesus was reclining at the table in Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners were actually there too, eating with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, The healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. In fact, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So far the Gospel reading.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text for this evening is the gospel lesson of the day. Take from the gospel of Matthew chapter 9. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. He said to him, follow me. Matthew got up and followed him. As Jesus was reclining at the table in Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners were actually there too, eating with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, The healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. In fact, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. In the name of our risen and ascended Lord, dear children of God, are you part of a club or some kind of hobby group? Why are you a member of such a group? I would imagine it's just a gathering of, of like-minded people. You, you are part of that group because you like the things they like. You, you think the way they, they think. You, you like to do the things they do. That's a wonderful thing. I'm sure it's something that, that can bring you a great deal of joy. Do you do work for that group? Maybe they're having a fundraiser or getting together to, to do what they do or just maybe just to get together with good fellowship. And Do you maybe coordinate or, or do other jobs for them? And why do you do that? But because you enjoy it, because it's, it's part of that group, it's part of what you do. You're a Christian. By the power of the Holy Spirit working through the gospel, God has brought you to faith. In fact, in a way God has called to you, like he did here with Matthew, and said, follow me. And because God has done that in your heart, we gather together, we could say, as like-minded people. We gather together as a congregation because we share a common faith, a common confession. And by gathering together, it gives us opportunities to, to fellowship with one another, to, to do things with one another, to put our money together and, and help missionaries. And so this evening, I want you to think about that call from God. A simple call. Where Jesus says, follow me. And he wants you to follow him with your actions. But more importantly, with your heart. Now Matthew might have met Jesus before. You might have had some interaction with him before. But now something, as we read it, very simple happens. Jesus comes up to Matthew and he looks at Matthew and he says, follow me. And we simply read, Matthew got up and followed him. He left his job to now, in a way, have a job following Jesus. He, he left what people in those days might have said, a, it's a well-paying job being a tax collector. But now he was going to be a disciple of Jesus. He was going to spend his time learning, and then at the same time later, teaching, sharing what Jesus had taught him, sharing what Jesus had done for the world. And so as Matthew was called to follow Jesus, he, he turned that call, he, he showed his faith by what he did. He simply followed Jesus. But he did more. Matthew wanted his friends to have what he had. And so Matthew seems to have throwing a dinner party, Jesus being the main guest. He, he invites his, his past friends because Matthew wants them to hear and see Jesus. And it says here in our text, 
Even the, the sinners and the tax collectors were there. But, but Jesus wasn't going to turn any of them away. That's why he had come to save sinners. So again, we see Matthew taking his faith, that, that simple call from Jesus, follow me, and taking that faith and turning it into action. He followed Jesus, and he did what he could to share Jesus. And is it any different with us? Whether it was at your baptism or as you maybe became an adult and heard the gospel for the first time, God calls us to follow him, to, to put our trust in him. He works that faith in our hearts. And we too now have opportunity to put that faith into action. We, we do it as a group quite often, don't we? We're doing it tonight, gathering together to hear the word of God, to grow in that faith God has given to us. But we put that faith into action uh, as we support a grade school so that our children might know what Jesus has done for them. We put those, that faith into action as we reach out into our community through, through advertising, th uh, through videotaping our services. We put that faith into action as we support missionaries all around the world. But you also do that as individuals. Not only do we express our faith collectively, we, we express our faith individually as, as you read and study the Word of God on your own, as, as you talk to your friends and family and neighbors about Jesus and what He has done for them. You help people around you, motivated by the love God has for you, how God has helped you. And we pray. We pray for one another. We pray for our missionaries. See, our t with us also, the, the faith turns into action. We do things. And that's what God is looking for. We follow Jesus with our actions. But Jesus here in our text has opportunity to go deeper. And he goes deeper because also there we know are these people called Pharisees. And they kind of get angry at Jesus and Matthew because look around here. We have these sinners and these, these tax collectors. These, these aren't good people. What are they doing here at this meal with Jesus? Jesus uses what they say as an opportunity to get them and really to get each one of us to think beyond the things that we do and ask a simple question, why? And so in a way, Jesus gives them a test. He says, I want you to go find out what it means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. See, Jesus wants us to follow him, yes, with our actions, but more importantly, with our hearts. The Pharisees, they were very religious people. If you met the Pharisees, you would look at them and you would say, boy, they are, those are some good people. And, and the people in the, that day did also. They looked at them and, and they followed them. They looked up to them a great deal. But Jesus again and again points out the Pharisees did many things just for show. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew, they do all their works to be seen by people. He called them hypocrites. He called them blind guides. He described them this way. He said, now you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup and dish. On the outside, it looks pretty good. But inside, you are full of greed and wickedness. He described it another way when he said, you are like whitewashed tombs that appear beautiful on the outside. But on the inside are full of dead people's bones and every kind of uncleanness. 
In our text, he describes them. He says, the healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. See, the, the Pharisees did not see their sin. They set up a really nice exterior, and boy, they looked good, at least what people saw from them. But they had a lot of trouble seeing themselves as sinful human beings and as, let's say, the righteous, the perfect, or at least mostly perfect. They saw no need for a Savior. They saw no need for, for Jesus. And so rejecting Jesus as a savior from sin, they were human beings no different than anybody else. Now that they, they sat in their sin, it was unforgiven because they rejected the one who forgives, the one who died for them. And so rejecting Jesus, they remain in their sins. Thinking they are perfect, thinking they are righteous, Rejecting a savior. What a horrible position to find themselves. And so Jesus, wanting to call them to repentance and giving us also something very important to think about, says this, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. See, Jesus quotes from our Old Testament reading today from the book of Hosea. Hosea was an Old Testament prophet sent to God's people because God's people, their, their hearts were turning away from God. Their hearts were turning cold. They, they were going through a lot of the motions of, of being a child of God, of being an Israelite. They knew the things God wanted them to do, but their hearts just weren't in it. And that temptation, that, that danger, really sits in front of all of us. Many of you are, are like me. You, you don't know a time in your life that you did not know Jesus as your Savior from sin. You have believed your entire life. And that is, that is a blessing beyond blessing. And yet, because of the sinful nature that's inside of us, we can turn a blessing into a temptation. Because, see, we can begin to just do things out of habit. We no longer really think about why we do what we do and why we believe what we believe. We, we just always have. And everything it gets tied up with, well, that's what I do on a Sunday morning. That's what I do on a Thursday night. And we don't think about the importance of it. And so we come, we sit down, we hear, and we walk away unaffected. Or we feel, you know, I, I, I've known, I've heard a lot of the Bible my entire life and there's really no reason that I should have to attend a Bible class. So why should I do that? And everything becomes a reason not to do it or I know enough or I, I, it becomes habit. And see what happens to our hearts is it gets full of tradition and it gets full of habit. And it, what happens is it becomes detached and uninterested. And when we're caught up in that, there's more than one example of people who slowly but surely fall away the Word of God isn't all that important anymore. I don't see what's in it for me. That desire to hear, that, that need to hear the gospel kind of just drifts away along with their faith. 
See, while doing things as a Christian is important, it's that faith. It's what motivates what you do, which is more important. See, if you remember from last Sunday, we're not going to be able to stand in front of God someday and say, God, I did this, and God, I did this, and this makes me worthy of getting into heaven. Jesus looks at us and says, sorry, I don't know you. Because we go through the motions. We do what we do because, well, we've always done it. And the faith that motivates, faith that moves us to love God, slowly but surely goes away. And like the Pharisees, we don't really see a need for Jesus for us. Yeah, he, he's died for sins, but you know, we're all right. See, it's so important, as Jesus says in our text, I did not come to call the righteous. I didn't come for those people who think they don't need me. But sinners. He said it another way in Luke when we read, The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The Apostle Paul said this about himself. He says, This is a trustworthy saying and worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Not those sinners. But you remember how he ended this? Of whom I am the worst. See, we can all say that. We all need to admit that. Because then in our repentance, as we stand before God and confess our sins, we can take all of those sins and we lay them on Jesus who lived and died and paid for each one of them on the cross. There's no one that is excluded from that, calling themselves a sinner. Because none of us are perfect. None of us can get our way to heaven. And thankfully, none of us are excluded either from the love and grace of God. See, as you see the and here the Pharisees say, oh, the sinners and the tax collectors are there. I hope in your own heart you can say, that meant I could be there. See, Jesus is for me. He lived and died and paid for my sins and your sins. Jesus wants to sit down and, and have a meal with you to, to talk to you about your sins and talk to you about his life and death. Jesus wants to walk with us as he did with the Emmaus disciples and, and tell us again and again all that he has done. See, Jesus wants to live with you day by day. Not just in your actions, but he wants your heart. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. Father, for giving us life and breath, talent and energy, we thank you. For income and nourishment, for honest work and opportunities to be useful, we look gratefully to you as our provider. For safety in our travels, we rejoice in the protection your angels give. For national peace, public prosperity, and moral consciousness in all citizens, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, through you we have the full rights of the children of God. What love the Father has lavished on us through our relationship with you. We praise you for saving us and giving your life as a ransom for our sin. May our spirits revive in the rest and peace of your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, through word and sacrament, restore to us the joy of our salvation. Cause the good seed of the word to produce sturdy faith and godly attitudes and behavior in each believer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the grace by which you have sustained your servants, Dennis and Kathy Laffey, throughout the 45 years of their married life. We ask that you continue to fill their hearts with the unselfish love that reflects your sacrificial love for them, so that their love for each other may never grow weary. With every joy and sorrow that they share, bring them closer to each other and to you, their God and Lord. Encourage all husbands and wives as they seek to fulfill their marriage promises and bless all our homes with your abiding peace. Bless all earthly fathers as they seek to fulfill the calling you have entrusted to them. Give them loving hearts and sound judgment to exercise godly family leadership. May they daily take to heart your admonition not to discourage or embitter their children by treating them harshly or unfairly. Help them instead to bring up their children in the training and instruction of the Lord. And loving Christian fathers, may children see reflections of you, the Father whose love for us is perfect and complete. Guide and uphold us during our pilgrimage in this world and bring us all to our heavenly home. Receive these petitions in the name of the Prince of Life, Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
We pray. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Good evening uh, to each one of you. You can see we've made a few adjustments again to the seating. Uh, we're trying to stay uh, as close as we can, I guess, to the guidelines that were given. Uh, we pray that God keeps all of you healthy and happy in the week ahead, and we gather together again next week. Uh, please look over the calendar. There's a few things there as, as we go along. We bring more and more things in. Uh, but, uh, well... You can see there's church council this week and a few other things. So please pay attention to the calendar. We're going to try uh, slowly to, to bring things uh, that we can gather together and see each other face to face as time goes by. Again, if you have any suggestions or concerns as far as church is concerned or other things, please uh, let someone know that we can address them and try to fix them if possible. Otherwise, have a great night. Thank you.